when you look at how the world around us has changed, there's this big divergence. The real economies move more into a digital, real-time, fast-paced world that we see around us every day. And banking and banking technology hasn't changed an awful lot in that time. A lot of that technology was not very good. It was expensive to roll out, expensive to customise, expensive to make it work. And we started Form 3, we wanted to challenge that. Form 3 is a cloud-native payment technology provider for regulated businesses. We connect those regulated businesses to payment schemes all over the world so they can deliver amazing products for their customers. We're now over 100 people in the organisation and growing fast. One of the motivations for me to start a company was to shape culture. I'm a strong believer in a flat company culture. I'm a strong believer in direct communication. A big ethos of who we are and what we do is the values that we've adopted across the organisation. They're absolutely embedded into everything that we do and the decisions that we make. We have a culture that really empowers individuals and teams to do the best work that they can, whether that's remote or in the office. You can have a great product, but people want to work with people. And I think that's why culture is so important at Form 3. This is an organisation that puts technology first um, and really thinks about how we use technology to drive the customer experience in all aspects that we can. The biggest decision we made was to build our own platform from scratch. We run a single code base for all of our customers. They connect into a predefined set of APIs um, that are already running in production with many other customers. Form3 provided the perfect solution for us, which was an API class-based solution. Our clients are able to provide their end users with a truly instant payments experience. The customer base was predominantly high growth. We've now transitioned to bringing on several large enterprise deals, which is a very exciting place to be and means that the business is going to boom very, very quickly. This year, we'll take more customers live in the faster payments infrastructure than all of the other technology providers combined. We've already rolled out into Europe. A year ago, we established an office and a team for Europe. Really committed to continuing on that path. We are going to expand internationally. The very nature of a technology platform that is built in the cloud is that it ports to different markets. What we're going to achieve moving forward is going to be incredible. There's nothing else that can disrupt the market like it. Every six to nine months we double the size of the organisation and each time we're proving to ourselves and to investors that the market opportunity is there, the way that we're tackling the problem is the right way. To bring together talented people from the business side with the product managers and the engineers to underpin this with the best in class internal procedures, operational procedures, onboarding procedures, that's when magic happens. I'm massively excited about this journey and it's only the beginning. As your team and cloud infrastructure grow, it becomes difficult to manage access to so many virtual machines and cloud applications. You may need to run your applications on untrusted networks, on the edge, or even on IoT devices. Providing secure access to SSH nodes, Kubernetes clusters, and web applications means juggling multiple complex and proprietary tools that don't always play nicely together. It gets even more challenging if you consider a revolving door of engineers and contractors who need convenient and secure access. And as you grow, staying compliant with new and existing regulations can present its own set of problems. Sounds like you'll need to deploy an army of security engineers. Well, you don't have to. Already trusted by industry leaders, Teleport makes it easy to access your cloud infrastructure and applications, keeping track of your authorizations, and helping you ace your audit. Teleport makes it easy to give your engineers and users the right access for the right duration. Teleport authenticates through your identity provider, offering role-based access to your servers and applications that expires automatically. Teleport gives you activity logging, session recording, and role-based access control regardless of where your servers and applications are running. Plus, it's designed to be compliant with the toughest regulations. You get zero trust access for SSH, Kubernetes, and cloud applications running anywhere in the world, from your cloud account and on-premise servers, to self-driving vehicles and edge devices. Find out how Teleport can secure your infrastructure, provide access to cloud applications, ensure visibility into user behavior, and cure your compliance headaches for good. Teleport is easy to install, 
And best of all, it's open source. Download it today. Teleport. Zero trust security that doesn't get in the way. Fugue Infrastructure as Code Scanning gives development teams the ability to secure their infrastructure as code files along with their runtime environments using the same policies. Let's take a look at how this is implemented. With a simple command line tool, we have the ability to inspect any of our Terraform files and on AWS, any of our CloudFormation templates. We can determine what the output format is, whether we want the output to be directly on screen or perhaps sent to another tool. Um, and we can also send those evaluations directly into the UI. Most importantly, we do have the ability to set certain severities. So if we have high violations, we can fail a build um, and not allow that specific infrastructure's code file to move forward into production. The output formats that we have directly on screen give us a tremendous amount of information, um, as well as information on how to actually remediate those through our documentation. We also have the ability to send these reports directly into the UI for reporting, and they will appear as repository environments and you will see these specific evaluations and information on compliance by control, compliance evaluations for the specific resource types as declared in your infrastructure's code file. Hello and welcome to Conf42 DevSecOps 2021. Build security in your DevOps with ease. This conference was made possible by Form3 and Teleport. Gold Sponsors, Silver Sponsors, and Media Partners. The conference opens with the first keynote by Adelina Simon and Ross McFlaren, building your own code inside tool at Form3. Hello everyone, I'm Adelina Simeon and I'm a technology evangelist at Form3. I help share our amazing tech stories with the tech community. So I'm really excited to be part of this year's COM42 DevSecOps. Hi, my name is Ross McFarlane, and I'm a lead engineer in the Form 3 Information Security team. Our talk, titled Building Our Own Custom Code Insight Tool at Form 3, is about the journey of implementing static code analysis at scale at Form 3 and shares our lessons learned from the process. We hope you'll find our talk insightful. The second keynote will be conducted by Travis Gary, using Infra as code instead of Jira tickets to pass security and compliance audits. Hi, I'm Travis, IT Director Teleport. Tune into my talk to learn how to replace Jira tickets with GitHub to pass your compliance audits and improve your security, because ultimately, hackers don't care about your change management process. In the next lecture, Josh Stella. CEO and CTO at Fugue will show you how to minimize the blast radius of a cloud bridge. Hi, I'm Josh Stella, the uh, CTO and co-founder of Fugue, a cloud security software company. Uh, great to be here at Con42. Come join me in my session. I'm going to be digging into a uh, blast radius uh, of cloud breaches and how to limit the blast radius of uh, a breach to your cloud environment. It'll be fun. It's mostly whiteboarding. Uh, I think there are three slides, including the intro. So uh, I hope to see you there. Thanks. The first track today is testing. Pavel Pivos, Lyft Software Engineer at IPAM System, is here to introduce you to security testing for Terraform templates. Hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be uh, here with you on Conf42. And I will talk about scanners for Terraform. We'll talk about security for infrastructure as code, why it is important, what issues we can have and we want to prevent. I'd be really happy if you join the session. I really hope you will enjoy it as well like the whole conference. Thank you very much and see you there. In the next talk, you will learn how to deliver secure apps continuously using automated serverless security testing with Tal Melamed, Senior Director at Contrast Security. Why am I giving you this talk? Right, why is it this talk interesting? Uh, Forrester predicts that uh, one out of four of you 
by the end of the year, we'll use serverless regularly. So I think it's a, an important topic to talk about. Um, and it's something we should be aware of, the security implications and challenges in serverless and serverless testing might be different. It's time for the tool track. Magno Logan, information security specialist at Trend Micro, will make you discover what's inside your apps. Software Composition Analysis 101. I'm going to talk about software composition analysis. So um, I have a lot of experience in application security and uh, pen testing and lately doing a lot of cloud and container security research. So I hope you enjoy my presentation here at Conf42. Thank you. In the next session, Ismail Lumani and Tangi Comp, the cloud folks at WeScale, will address compliance as code with Cloud Custodian. Hi, my name is Ismail. And my name is Tangi. For technical people, compliance is usually thought as something boring left to the so-called in-charge people. We think the opposite as through policies, we can easily integrate compliance into a DevOps mindset. During this talk, we will introduce you to Cloud Custodian. It's a powerful tool that helps you to uh, enable compliance in your cloud platform using a dedicated domain-specific language. A demo will illustrate through a concrete security case how easy it is to use Cloud Custodian to bake into your cloud platform compliance. We, we hope to see you soon. Centralized policy management at scale is the next lecture by Noah Barkey and Shimon Tolls from Day3. So today we're going to talk about the how to manage centralized policy at scale. Here we're going to show it to you in the eyes of a Kubernetes administrator that tries to, to manage the policies for the organization. But I think it can be applied not only for Kubernetes, if you're a serverless organization or yeah. any other organization. Radoslav Pilisek. IT Systems Architect at 7 is here to talk about automated DevSecOps with the Piacere project. Hello everyone, I'm glad to be on your screen. In my talk, I am presenting Piacere, a research and development project funded by the European Union. You might recognize Piacere as an Italian word for pleasure, or to please as a verb, and it's pretty accurate when it comes to this project. Piacere is DevSecOps framework for maximizing DevSecOps productivity and thus enhancing pleasurable experience with DevSecOps. Yet, in fact, Piacere is an acronym. If you want to learn more, tune in for my talk. Improve the identification of vulnerabilities in your project with just a few commands. Introducing Felipe Pires, security researcher at San Hasegura. I've been working as a principal security engineer in security research and security advocate in many different fields when you talk about the cybersecurity. And uh, by the way, I'm security research at Senha Segura. Senha Segura is a global company responsible to provide uh, some solutions uh, about PAN. PAN is an acronym of the Privilege Access Management, right? And uh, I'm researching this uh, company. The KA track opens up with A.R. Zilberman, the CPO at Daytree. In my talk, I'm going to talk about the Kubernetes schema validation process. It's something that's happening every time that you're trying to apply your configuration into your cluster, but not a lot of people are actually familiar with the process itself until they are getting thrown by an arrow that's rejecting their configuration. So today we're going to see and understand exactly why this process is happening and which kind of validations are included and which are not. We're also going to talk about best strategies to check it as soon as possible in your workflow and not only when you're trying to apply your configuration. Mathieu Tortuo and Cyan Chowdhury from Microsoft are here to talk about securing and hardening containers hosts. Hello, I'm Cyan. Uh, I work at Microsoft with the Flatcar Container Linux uh, team. I primarily look into the release planning and do the releases. I also look into the package maintenance uh, in the Flatcar Linux project. Hello, here's Mathieu, and I mainly work uh, in the Flatcar team maintainers to test uh, VOS before we release. And we're super excited to be here with you the second of December for the Con42 DevSecOps uh, conference. We will talk about securing and hardening your container hours in order to secure your container workloads. Super excited and see you there. Manage secrets across cloud on Kubernetes is the next session by Jonathan Hill-Chavez, DevOps engineer at AppGate. Hi everyone, 
and talking about the secrets in Kubernetes at Class Cloud, uh, how do you can use the secrets in Kubernetes around the, your cloud environment? How do you can obtain secrets from AWS, from GCP, from Azure, or bare metal to can use your secrets for your Kubernetes workloads? Talking about that. The next track today is pipelines. Manage your threat hunting workflows to stay ahead of the game with Christopher van der Maid, developer advocate at Cisco. Today you'll hear me talk about automating your threat hunting workflows. And what I mainly focus on is finding fresh new threat intelligence, creating hypotheses based on those, and then actually testing them. Now the um, goal is obviously to automate the whole process. Uh, there are many companies out there that don't even do this type of threat hunting. So I was thinking if you can actually automate it, then it uh, becomes a lot easier for a lot of companies to and organizations to implement it. I hope I inspire you to do something similar and enjoy. Securing your pipes with a taco is the next talk by Peter Madison, managing partner at Zodiac. I'm going to be talking to you about how to secure your delivery pipelines with TACOs. TACOs is a model that I came up with to help with automating governance, to help accelerate the adoption of DevOps practices in highly regulated environments. I look forward to seeing you there. Rob Richardson, developer advocate at Cyril, will now tell you more about container scanning. Run fast and stay safe. I'm really excited to talk to you about container scanning. Now, container scanning is a great methodology for being able to validate our container. Together with unit integration, static analysis, and license validation tests, container scanning offers us the ability to validate that the software running inside of our container is not vulnerable. Well, wait a minute. Doesn't containers just solve that? Isn't Kubernetes the reason that we did that? We have ephemeral hardware, so it can't change. Well, yeah, we do have ephemeral, isomorphic, and deterministic hardware but Kubernetes really only protects Kubernetes. We're responsible for the content running inside of our containers. So join us at Comp42 DevSecOps, where we'll talk about container scanning and see how we can integrate container scanning into our DevOps pipeline. I'll see you there. The lessons learned track is the last, but the biggest one today. Opening up with the quick wins of DevSecOps by Sven Rupert, developer advocate at JFrog. Hello and welcome here to this video. It's a pleasure for me to see you here. And what we want to talk about today. So today we want to talk a little bit about how to start with security inside the DevOps environment. What is the main or what are the four main areas of cyber defense and what you can do, what was leading to this um, executive order of cyber security and why built info or built metadata is a very good weapon against cyber attacks. If you're interested in this, stay tuned. Adar Shah, CEO of Composest, is here to address the challenges scaling EAC and how to resolve them, from infrastructure as code to environment as code. This talk is based on my and my team's experience working with and helping various companies adopt infrastructure as code and the challenges we have seen scaling infrastructure as code over the years. I will also introduce environment as code, which has helped us resolve those challenges. Some of what you will hear today around environment as code is new, and I would love to hear what you think about it, answer any questions, and discuss it further. Lessons learned from writing thousands of lines of EAC is the next session by Eran Bibi, CPO of Firefly. I've been working as a DevOps for over a decade now, and after writing countless lines of infrastructure as code, I feel it's my calling to share with you what works and what doesn't, and what pitfall you should avoid. In my talk, I will share with you the most valuable lesson learned from my experience, the do's and don'ts, and some of the nifty tricks help you to build flawless infrastructure. Patterns for encrypting data at rest in cloud-native applications is the next topic by Sentil Raja Champandarian, principal software developer at Ericsson. My job is to design and develop MLOps platforms. There are different types of data and a variety of solutions to store the data. In this talk, I will introduce you to the patterns and recipes for data encryption at rest. You can use these recipes 
to implement your own data encryption solution. Do check out my talk in Con42 DevSecOps 2021. Thank you. Embark now for the journey from DevOps to cloud engineering with Matty Stratton, staff developer advocate at Pulumi. So we've been talking about DevOps for years. And along the way, we've added various syllables to the portmanteau of DevOps to include all the practices and disciplines that are necessary to make this work effective. But what if DevOps and DevSecOps and all these other variants have been about the same thing all along? Join me for my talk, The Journey from DevOps to Cloud Engineering, where we'll dig into that a little bit, take a little history tour, and see if maybe we can just take our modern practices and take DevOps back. Jonathan Williams, product engineer at Twilio IoT, is here to show you how to overcome IoT security threats from the start. We will take a look at a few cautionary examples before exploring what it really takes to build a secure device. This is ideal for anyone who is thinking of building a connected device and wants a short guide as to what you must consider from a security point of view. Controlled Software as a Transversal Matter is the next lecture by Manuel Schuler, Senior DevOps Evangelist. Hello, everybody. I pick up my coffee. Welcome to Con42 DevSecOps event. This year, uh, I'm Manuel. I will be talking about how in my favorite bank we make sure that all the security aspects are managed uh, during the uh, release pipeline of the software, whatever the technology, whatever the uh, pipeline itself. Uh, come and join in to hear my talk. Thanks. Jaron Williamson, Principal Security Architect at Zebia, will talk about secrets management, challenges from code to cloud. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll start off with showing how to not store secrets in various places in your system to give you kind of a feeling of what we actually see in the wild nowadays. This will be done based on the OWASP project called Wrong Secrets. Luckily, we don't stay on the negative side of things. We'll also show what you could have done to mitigate these type, type of issues that we saw and how you in the future can make sure that this no longer happens. Hope to see you there. The last but definitely not least talk at the conference will show you how to keep your startup's cloud secure when the security team is just you. Please join me in welcoming Ryder Damon, DevOps engineer at Indenai CloudRail. I'm giving a talk on how to keep your startup's cloud secure when your security team is just you. So if you find yourself in that situation, feel free to check it out. This is all we got for Con42 DevSecOps 2021. Big thank you to our speakers, partners and sponsors for making this whole thing possible and to you for attending. As always, free RSVP unlocks all the content available at the conference. We'd like to also invite you to our Discord server to have a chat with other attendees and speakers. Just before you get there, make sure to read the code of conduct. Couple more announcements before we go. Are you a tech contributor who dreams of becoming a global tech author? PACT's dedicated team of editors and mentors will help you do just that with the PACT Tech Pro system. From ideation to creating a game plan to building a bulletproof manuscript, they'll see you all the way through to becoming a published author. And with a record of over 10 million books sold and over a million direct customers, you know that you're in good hands. Learn more at pactpub.com. We are super excited to partner up with AT Level. It's a platform where you can find your perfect game industry job. Com42 community members will have a chance to activate the premium account and contact HR managers directly. Learn how to find your perfect game industry job with at.lv slash talent. Com42 will come back in 2022. The lineup for the next year is already public on our main website, so make sure to check out com42.com for more information about registration and call for papers. That was Mark, and I hope to see you on Discord in a minute. Thank you so much.